Welcome back everyone. Good morning. I'm coming to you from an early morning here. And uh, today we're going to talk about kind of a combination of the new Cummins engine that's coming out, diesel emissions regulations tightening, how that plays into uh, gas engines, and we're just going to kind of go from there. A little bit of a rant video I suppose. So anyway, first things first is the new Cummins engine. I would say much to nobody's surprise. 6.7 liter still. Um, they're kind of doing what I'll call the usual things that manufacturers do. They play with the intakes, they play with the turbo sizing and type. Um, you know, maybe they make the injection, injector pump a little bit higher pressure, right? The high pressure injection pump, just to get a little bit more fuel atomization and that sort of thing. So the engine itself is exactly what they, in a sense, should be doing, right? Take your current working product and just innovate it as needed for the, uh, you know, whatever the new parameters are in the market. Release a known good technology and you're all set. Now, there has been a bit of an issue with fifth generation Ram Cummins engines. Um, the, they went to roller rockers. Uh, they used to be a flat tappet design, which is like an old school, you know, small block Chevy or whatever. But they went to a more modern roller rocker design. They've had issues with the roller rockers. Um, they've had a lot of failures, camshaft and rocker failures, or roller failures. So that's that's not good. But um, so I guess we'll see if they go back to flat tappets. Um, I don't know that it said in the article that I read. I'm trying to think now if it. I don't think it said if they were or not. Didn't mention that at all. So we'll assume not for the sake of this video. Um, other things. They, they had some injection pump issues. Seems like they cleared that up, I guess. I don't know. I want to say that they went to the dreaded CP4 and then went back in like 2022 20, or whatever. So, a little bit rusty on that stuff, but I digress. Um, so, Cummins is making some probably good changes. I'm sure they'll wind up with at least class leading torque, maybe class leading horsepower, but. Usually the Cummins is a little bit light on horsepower compared to the Ford um, or even Chevy offerings, right? So it might just be class leading torque and not horsepower. Um, so we'll see about that. But with all that being said, they also have to meet new stricter emissions regulations. So diesel particulate matter numbers have gone down, you know, by multiple times too. We're not talking like a small percentage. We're talking really tightening up on the particulate matter emissions NOx emissions um, and because of this Ram addressed it a little bit they're going to be running essentially a bigger DPF running you know more collecting more particulate matter in the diesel particulate filter they'll also be running more DEF so I wouldn't be surprised if you see a larger def tank on all these trucks um, but you know we'll see if that you know how that plays out um yeah it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be interesting because that's something that i feel like can kind of slip under the radar a little bit everybody just says oh you know modern diesel has emissions components it's at the dpf the scr you, you love it or hate it or you're somewhere in between you deal with it you don't deal with it you go buy a gas truck you delete it you buy an older diesel and then life moves on right but I think people forget the fact that they keep increasing the emissions regulations such that if that DPF is doing more work, it either needs to be a larger, more costly system, or it's probably going to clog and regen more often, and therefore you're going to get worse fuel economy, burn more diesel, and uh, you know, potentially clog the filter up permanently sooner. You know, manufacturers consider a DPF a maintenance item, and it, and it is. It's just a very friggin' expensive maintenance item, and a somewhat hard to replace one because it's not like an easy to access cartridge, right? You know, on bolt stuff, not a huge deal, but something to consider there. So, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, the cost per mile of running a diesel truck, due to that, is just going to be on the rise a little bit, right? That, that's what it comes down to. Is is other, aside from any side of the road breakdowns, you know, you're just your your running costs for the average Joe go up, and uh, diesel emissions. The irony of it is, at least from a particulate matter perspective, are already cleaner than gas engines. So believe it or not, direct injected gas engines create 
about the same amount of particulate matter output that a modern diesel does with a DPF, and especially they'll actually create more after this change is put into place. So once they you know, have the, the newer emission standards, a gas direct ejected vehicle will produce more sun. And you can see that, right? If you get behind, like even a modern Subaru or Toyota, if somebody punches it, they belch black smoke, like a little proof of black smoke, just like an old school diesel did. Uh, modern diesel doesn't ever throw black smoke, visible black smoke, right? Visible particulate matter. So it's just, even to the naked eye, you can tell they produce some decent carbon output. And uh, I'll be very curious to see what the EPA might do to gasoline vehicles to try to quell that because it, it's the exact same form of emissions. So why they're letting it get away, why they're letting companies get away with it on one fuel type and not the other, is actually kind of a mystery to me. I mean, I'm not complaining. I'd rather not have a DPF on a gas engine as well. Uh, you know, again, there's a lot of uh, penalties that come along with that from a user cost perspective and reliability. Ram is also going to a DPF uh, heater. So the particulate filter will have a separate 48 volt heater on it in order to help facilitate more efficient regenning um, and keep it from getting clogged, which a lot of people are rolling their eyes right now. Oh, you know, it's more electronics, more computers, more than it. You know, I would normally agree, but I think this is actually a good thing. And here's why I say that. Because right now you're dumping raw fuel into your uh, particular filter in order to get it to help facilitate regenning if the conditions are just so that you know you don't have enough exhaust heat to re regen on its own right and I really do think that if you had a system if you had a system where you're using an electric heater to keep the DPF at an optimal temperature all the time you could really stand for a long filter life even if down more emissions you know the, the dbf does not run very efficiently on its own it's, it's kind of in this weird state of flux all the time on a cold start the dbf is very very cold just clogging the soot when you're not towing the dbf stays cold and they're just dumping raw diesel into it to get it to heat up so <clears throat> that electric heater could really bridge the gaps between your towing time and your cold start times to kind of help keep that DPF where it needs to be. So that I'm actually not a, uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually a fan of. I, I think as long as it works in practice, it, uh, it definitely works in theory. Those two things don't always match up, but we'll see in this case if it does. Using, as far as using more DEF, if they make the tank bigger, from a convenience perspective, it's kind of a moot point, but it just costs more money, which sucks, right? If you're using, say, double the dev, I don't know what the number would be, but it's just that much more money you have to spend, which is annoying. Nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to put even more money per mile into their already a little bit expensive to run diesel truck, you know, especially if it's your business, right? It's just that's money directly out of a, like small businesses' pockets and, and even just the personal guy who's towing their camper on the weekend and driving back and forth to work, you know. That kind of thing. It, 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 so long as the gasoline side of things doesn't start getting much more locked down emissions wise, it just continually makes the gas engine argument more and more appealing to people. And, and I think that's where the problem lies, right? The, and I'm a gas guy. I don't have a diesel truck. I, I frankly bought a you know gas version of a diesel truck, i.e. the 7.3 Ford Super Duty. But I think it's ridiculous because... You don't want to de-incentivize people from buying diesel engines. Diesel engines are inherently more efficient than gas engines. For a, a non-deleted, or sorry, a deleted diesel or a pre-emissions diesel, compared to a pretty similar gas engine power output wise, a little hard to compare because a lot of times gas engines have more horsepower and less torque, but as similar as reasonably possible, the diesel will get better fuel economy every day of the week like 100, 100 times out of 100. So I don't know why there's this hate in the U.S. for, for diesel. Um, I, I think there's a, I think, I think there is a case to be made for limiting carbon output, black smoke production to a degree. Um, you know, because back in the 90s and 2000s, if people 
hot rod their diesels and are blowing black smoke everywhere. Like, you know, out in the countryside, it makes little to no difference, right? But in cities, it actually does create like objectively bad localized pollution that is harmful to humans, like does cause cancer. Like that part's not a, regardless of global warming and climate change and any of the nuances of that, the localized pollution in cities perspective, that's a real thing. Like buses and cars idling do cause legitimate air quality issues, smog, um, you know, and, and do shorten lifespans. So there is a need for some amount of emissions control. That's an unpopular opinion in the car community, but like there definitely is. In the same way we got rid of leaded gas because it actually lowers people's IQ. Like there is, there are regulations that are good in that sense, but these emissions regulations on diesels are just getting so strict that I think we are creating enough added cost and hassle that it, the juice might not be worth the squeeze. Um, that's that's kind of where I'm at with it. The, the year as the years go by, and the more and more I see with this kind of stuff. That being said, it, it's pretty remarkable, honestly, for as much crap as we give all the manufacturers for various recalls and things that they maybe don't do the best job of. They've all found a way to keep cramming more and more power out of these diesels. Uh, while meeting tighter emissions regulations, which is actually kind of incredible. Um, that being said, that leads into my next point. They need to stop doing that. Sorry, buddy, I kind of cut you off a little bit. Um, they need to stop doing that because instead of increasing power more and more and more, I feel as though for most users, we've got an amount of power that is good enough, right? Like, we don't need... Ford now has 1,200 foot-pounds of torque. I'm sure Chevy is going to be, or sorry, I'm sure Ram is going to be up there with this new Cummins, and I'm sure Chevy will lag behind at, say, 1,100 foot-pounds or 1,150, which is still very, very good. I don't say that in, like, a bad way. They just typically seem to not be in the horsepower wars, which I think is a good thing. Um, and, and what I want to see them focus on, and maybe Chevy could lead this if they don't want to play the horsepower war game, Focus on emission system reliability and fuel economy. I would rather have a thousand, I'd rather, at least for my uses, right? I'd rather have a 900 foot pound of torque diesel. And if you're towing up to say 15, 20,000 pounds, that's probably really all you need. 400 something horsepower, 900 foot pounds. It's probably enough for most people. Hey, more is always better. I'm not saying that. But it's like, it's a, it's a cost-benefit thing. I'd rather have 900 foot-pounds if I could get 2 mpg better or even 1.5 miles per gallon better in every scenario, towing, empty, etc. And somehow know that my emission system will be whatever, 30% more reliable, 40% more reliable, longer lasting. I would rather see them advertise based on that than just continually pumping up the numbers because unless you're towing 25, 30,000 pounds, you know, we're already in old school semi-truck power categories. And yes, it makes for a great towing experience, but at some point, to me, you have to draw a line and say, okay, enough power, let's increase the known reliability concerns and issues with the other systems associated with these trucks. And, and I know that that's not as, uh, that's not as in vogue to advertise, right? Like. It's harder for a marketing company to, uh, you know, take the new Ford F250, F350, whatever, and say, hey, uh, it has the same amount of power as last year, but, like, it gets a little better economy, and it, the emission system should be a little more reliable, but the warranty on the emission system is the same. It's like they'd have to do a lot of things. They'd have to increase the warranty on the emissions. Um, they would have to start probably publishing... EPA rated fuel economy numbers that they want to then make those claims. So that's kind of what makes that tough, right? Is you don't have the same rating systems uh, on diesel trucks that you do on, or any HD truck, but on diesels that you do uh, on like a passenger car in the passenger car world. So, I don't know, but they could probably do it. They could find a way to do it. And I think if one of the big three started advertising fuel economy and made a point of it, I do think people would listen. People would care. Everyone kind of says, oh, well, it's a big truck. I don't care what mileage it gets. I just need it to move my load. 
I agree. But hey, if it can do that cheaper, why not? Like, if I could get better economy and move the same damn trailer pretty much at just as efficiently as whatever the other engine is by the other company, why wouldn't I do that? That, that just That's a no-brainer to me. It drives me nuts that people say fuel economy doesn't matter. It's like, yeah, it's not the, it doesn't matter the most, but it matters, right? It's, it's second or third. It's not first, maybe. You know, can the truck do the thing you need it to do is first. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with that. Anyways, thanks for watching. God bless America, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.